Hello YouTube, how you guys doing today? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the two best frames that you guys should be using as beginning players, beginner, with your, if you're new to the game, you haven't gotten through your star chart yet, what are you after? What's going to help you the best get through this when you're brand new to the game? And I'm even going to go over some ways to cheese some of the things, but I'll go over all the different mission types. And first, I want to show you Frost. Frost, we get from series, uh, Zeta, I think it's Zeta, is the, but you're basically killing the boss on series. And that's going to drop Frost parts. You need his chassis, his helmet, and his, or his neuroptics, and his uh, systems, and his blueprint you're going to get from the in-game market, which uh, I'll show you guys in a second. Same thing with Rhino. Rhino, you're going to kill the boss that I'm going to go over three times. Rhino, you're going to find on Venus. Kill the boss on Venus for Rhino. You got to gotta kill the boss so that you get three different parts to drop. One part will drop every time for both of these frames. Um, but you need also Rhino's Neuroptics, his chassis, and his systems, and you buy his blueprint from the in-game market, which again, I'll show you in a second. So this is the Frost build, right? This is a defensive build, which basically means the range is up really high, because the range is going to make his bubbles bigger. Uh, whether I use defensive or quick bubble build, um, it's really up to you and your preference, but the, uh, quick bubble build, I think I can see, has a little bit more efficiency. So, Frost first ability, you're not going to use this. You don't need to use it, um... But one quick fun thing that people don't know, or should I save this for another video? However many fun things you didn't know about in Warframe. So, a lot of people don't know this, um, but it works. If you use Frost Bubble, and then you walk outside of his bubble, and you use his one on his bubble, it makes the bubble disappear. So, for those of you that didn't know that, now you know. And that might actually come in handy for something. Um, but it's just a fun thing that I think a lot of people don't really realize you can do. But yeah, if you throw your first ability at the bubble, the bubble disappears. Yeet. But first ability, you don't need to use this to get through the game. Second ability, you don't need to use this to get through the game. Third ability, totally using this. This is what I, when I have had to play this game uh, over again, like when I started over, both times I think that I played this game all the way through, bubble, totally frost bubble, lifesaver. It's like, frost is the one that I recommend because he's a little bit more defensive with the bubble. Rhino, on the other hand, is a little bit more crowd controlly. Um, and I'll get into why you might like a Rhino for getting through the star chart, but this is, Again, the reason why Frost and Rhino were recommended. And his Avalanche. This is kind of good, too. When you guys are, like, in the bubble, you're protecting nodes, defense targets, whatever. Um, whatever it is you might be doing. Um, the bubble is really, really healthy. Um, it keeps it safe. It keeps everything safe. And then the Avalanche, boom. Use that to blow up all the enemies outside of it. What I actually want to do is take this out and show you guys the different scenarios. Um, it is highly recommended. And this is part of the cheese. The quote-unquote how to cheese getting through the star chart when you're new, put the game on public. That's how you cheese it. Just put the game on public and help other people get through the game. Like, they'll help you, you'll help them. I don't mean, like, go out of your way and chit-chat with them and be like, Hi. Hi, sir. I'm a poor orphan boy from um, New England, and I need some help beating the spy. So, Frost, first, let's say you're doing a defense, right? And the defense target is solid. Means it doesn't go anywhere. It's just sitting on the sitting on the ground. Boom. Now it is protected. Really quick for you guys to understand is that frost bubble. When you pop the bubble, and the bubbles stack too in being able to protect whatever target it is. So typically, whenever I run into a mission and I'm protecting a target, I usually throw one, two, three. I usually do it like that. I just throw like three bubbles down to protect the target. The stacks actually make the bubble even harder to penetrate, uh, makes it last longer. So stacking bubbles is a good thing. The next thing you guys want to know about Frost is when you're throwing his bubble down, if you want to be really meta about it, because some people do, um, you have three seconds of invulnerability with this bubble, where the bubble won't take any damage for three seconds. So if you really are trying to be meta about it, then when you stack your bubbles, you kind of want to do it like... One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, next bubble, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, you get the point, next bubble. And then, you st and then you're stout. If you're really trying to be meta about it, that's one way that you can go about doing it. But bubbles are great for defenses, excavations, protecting the excavation target, um, interceptions, and protecting the nodes from enemies, and all that sort of stuff. Um, those, I think, have always been the biggest pain in the butt. But his bubble is such a lifesaver for every other reason, too. Like, let's say you're in a squad and everybody's down and you need to save somebody, but you realize, oh, no, I don't have a lot of health and I'm not going to be able to save them. So you throw your bubble down on top of them. Like, let's this bush. Let me revive this bush. Yay! And then I'll go and revive this person while I'm in my bubble, protect it and all that stuff. Um, and it makes it a lot easier for you to be the hero, uh, the zero to hero. 
So, basically with Frost, you can get through any any mission you want. Captures, there's no magic thing. Rhino Frost, any Warframe captures are easy Stop to do. Shouting. Exterminations, it's all the same thing. Most of the kills are coming from your weapons or your Warframe abilities, and it doesn't matter which ones you're using as long as you're getting kills with it. Um, spy missions, this is the cheese part. Just have other people do spy missions. Like, put it on public and just do spy missions with other people. If you don't want to do that for the cheesy way and you want to, like, yeah, I really want to earn how good I am at this, then the best thing that you can do is honestly just keep doing the spy missions over and over and over again until you learn how they work. I can do a spy mission with any Warframe because I've learned how they all work. So it doesn't matter who I have or what it is that I'm doing. But when it comes to that, uh, like a spy, it's really whatever whatever Warframe want to do. But if you're struggling with it because you haven't learned how the spies actually work, it's just going to take practice or you being on public to get through those. Um, there's probably some missions that I forgot to mention, but at the end of the day, you, you understand why Frost is so powerful for getting through everything, because he's just, it's just defense. It's everywhere you go. Like, let's say you're doing a deflection mission, and you're protecting the squad. There you go. We have, like, a centipede of bubbles now, which is great. Or a caterpillar of bubbles. So, it, really, understanding that that's, the bubble is the most important thing with Frost when you're new and you're getting through the game. That's what you really need to understand. When we load back in to the orbiter, I'm going to show you guys where you get the blueprints because I mentioned that earlier but didn't like touch on that. So here, let me get out of the screen. And then I'm going to pull Rhino out and I'm going to show you what's important about Rhino. All right, so when you get into the market here, you're going to go to Warframes and you can type in Frost, you can type in Rhino, whatever you want to do, but click on them. And it says right here, blueprint for 25,000 credits. Credits are easy to get. So if you're brand new and you're, you know, let's say you're doing the boss and you're collecting all these other parts that you need anyway, you'll probably have 25,000 credits to be able to get this. And save, it'll be the same thing with Rhino. So buy the blueprint. Don't purchase the whole frame of platinum. It's a waste. Just get the blueprint and uh, you will be good to start building it in your foundry, whether that's Frost or Rhino. So now moving on to Rhino and why Rhino is so incredibly good for getting through the game. So let's go over this. Here is the Rhino build that I have. This is probably a personal build. No, this is for Index. So CC, Crowd Control. So we'll go to the Crowd Control build with Rhino. This, again, is probably going to take you guys a while to be able to put together, but it works. Like, it'll it'll do what you need it to do. Um, for his first ability, his charge, we don't need this. We're not really using this for anything. It's not super effective. Um, it might be when you're new to the game, but when you hit, like, level 40 or higher, it's kind of useless. Um, his Iron Skin. This is huge personal defense. This iron skin will will cause a lot of uh you being able to take a lot of damage. And this also has it says time invulnerable. You'll get three seconds when you start this of invulnerability. And then whenever an enemy shoots you or slaps you with a sword or something, you're gonna take um no damage because of his iron skin. But if you look at the bottom right hand side of the screen when you're using this ability and you can see the abilities up, it'll be it'll have a counter. Like it'll tell you how much damage you have left to take. Um, his Roar ability basically grants all nearby Warframes increased damage for a short period of time. I don't remember if this gives him personal damage. I want to say it does. I think it actually does give him... Basically, Stop, it's a buff. It's a buff for your squad. This isn't the most important thing, though. Um, the Iron Skin is with Rhino, and then secondly, his ultimate is incredibly important. Because yeah, yeah, what his yeah, ultimate yeah. is doing party, party, party. is, if you guys can see it in the little video here, he slams his foot down on the ground. All the enemies get flung up into the air in slow motion, which is a great way when you're getting, like, overrun by all these enemies and they're, you know, blasting at you, whatever you're doing. You could just use his fourth ability, and that kind of, like, almost freezes time a little bit or puts everything in slow-mo while the enemies are being tossed in the air. So you, got, you kind of get a breath, and you're not getting, like, attacked so heavily anymore. So... This one and this one with Rhino are the two most important ones you're going to want to use for getting through the star charts. That being said, um, again, same thing. Once you like, If you guys understand how I kind of conceptualized how you use Frost when you're going through all the different types of missions in the star chart, like whether it's a defense, a mobile defense, uh, you know, excavation, interception, whatever it is, Rhino is going to be used in a very similar way. You know, you're, you're looking at his abilities and you're saying, how is this ability going to help me get through this mission? How much, and you need to focus. How much energy do I have? What do I need to do to make sure that this works out really smoothly? All that being said, um, I feel like you guys probably get the point, so I don't really need to take Rhino out and show you that, but that is it. Once you guys, you get, a, you get yourself a Rhino or a Frost, and again, they are found on Ceres and Venus. 
Venus being the first one here, which I think is where you get Frost. You're going to do the boss on this planet. And then Ceres is all the way over here. So you're going to get to... Oh, that's really not far away. So you're starting on Earth. You'll get to Venus first after Earth, right? And then you can eventually get yourself to Mars, jump to Ceres, and then you can grab... I think Rhino comes from here. Either way, this is where you get these two. They're pretty early game, and they're really, really great for getting through the entirety of the star chart, which is something I recommend you do as soon as you possibly can. But all that being said... Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn notifications on. If you guys like free stuff, like you want free Warframes, weapons, mods, um, on any platform in Warframe, I've been playing this game for so many years, I have so many of them. You guys can earn those absolutely free on my Twitch channel. Just stop by when I'm live, ask me how it works. I'm live just about every day, and uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome night, day, whatever time it is. I absolutely love your faces. If I don't see you guys in the next video, I'll see you on my Twitch channel. Laters!